Right, okay, we are here, I've arrived. You've seen the train journey, uh, a bit different for me. Don't normally travel by train, that was nice. But I'm down at Woburn Golf Club and I'm here to test the next generation, Gen 2, of PXG drivers. And I don't know about you, but I'm really excited. Can't wait to give this a try. And the interesting thing is, I've tried the irons, I've tried the driving iron, as you've seen on some of the videos I've done before. I have never hit a driver from PXG until this morning. Right, so just arrived at a uh, few people in before me getting fit right now. That's uh, Dan Walker from the BBC actually, just uh, going through his fit with Lawrence, who you've seen on the channel before. A couple of other guys all filming and trying out this new. I'm hearing lots of good noises from uh, the people who are trying these clubs, I've got to be honest. Not my turn yet, but building up the uh, anticipation of it all, because seriously, very positive. Dan Walker looks a player, doesn't he? Best right, the way no. yeah, the so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool, baby. Love that. I wouldn't bother trying to draw your driver. Just draw that. Yeah, so still lots going on, not my turn yet, but I have to say, everybody, and this is uh, serious stuff, that uh, everybody that's hitting this golf club, uh, there's plenty of people from different sorts of media, whether it be from magazines or from different sorts of channels such as this, everybody is coming off with uh, lots of positivity. There's lots of loud noises, and, and, and serious, it's, uh, they're all really, really impressed with this driver. I'll give some text back on it all a bit later on and uh, plenty of nice pictures thrown up for you to have a look at. Um, but like I said, at the minute it sounds like uh, a lot of positivity for this PXG club. Right, so as I've just been explaining, plenty of people having a go on the range of this new PXG product and there was a lot of loud noises coming from Dan Walker. I love a big woo. woo! There, was, there was a lot of big woos. <laughs> You, I've already told my audience you're pretty impressed with it by the sounds of things. Uh, very, yeah, I've been uh, I've been playing PXG for a while, um, and I've heard a lot about yeah. Gen Two. Yeah. Um, and the, the, when I switched originally, probably uh, 18 months ago, I, I saw a big reduction in sort of dispersion with irons. I love the wedges to bits. Um, I liked the Gen One driver, yeah. but I, I felt I was losing um, a few too many to the right hand side, even when I put a good swing on yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I measure my drivers in love. Yeah, yeah. And I, from How much love? Three hits in, I was already yeah. loving the Gen 2 driver 20% more yeah, yeah. than the previous one. It's, right, it's okay. um, far more forgiving. Um, I've gone to the XF rather than the X. I wasn't right, the X okay. before, so I've gone XF. Um, which apparently quite a few of the pros are going in that XF, which enables them to still hit it a long way. But uh, plenty forgiving dispersion plenty numbers. Of, good. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's it's gone um, in exactly the right place. Well, it's yeah, lovely, I mean, which is why I was whooping so. Yeah, much. well, I, I I was I was watching not from afar, but 15 yards at the back there, and you were hitting some decent balls. We've I've also seen the numbers. We won't go through them, but they were impressive, weren't they? Are they are, well, it's just I've, I've got long levers. I'm six foot six, so I, I've always been able to hit the ball a long way. My my thing now is I've come you know, play off. Uh, quite low numbers now about two two point four at the moment and my thing is it's just control of the golf ball and having that feeling that when you hit it you know where it's going yeah yeah and I think confidence. yeah and that's it and especially off the tee with a big stick it's the yeah well, you've got to keep it, you, you've got to keep it on the short stuff yeah, yeah. Keep, if I drive well I play well you're gonna score yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and and the other thing I've I've uh, had a look at today is the new the yeah. new generation three wood yeah I love the old three wood in fact it's my favorite club in the bag um, but then I've just gone 10 grams heavier on the shaft, so I've gone eight to an 80 gram shaft. Difference. It's made a big difference, yeah. Just a slight weight change, but that's helped me to hit it a bit, um, a bit lower if I need to, but I can also hit that soft landing high one. Well, again, uh, not quite the average golfer, Dan, at two point no, whatever no, you said you were off, 2.4, which is uh, great to see. But I think what it does show, again, uh, real positive noises, like I've said already, about everyone that's tried this product so far. I assure you, I will hit it very soon. But uh, also the importance of that custom fit and getting it uh, club dialed into you, isn't it, shaft-wise and head-wise? Exactly, and, and I was thing. already fully specced up uh, first time round, so we haven't actually made that many changes to the irons. Um, but I think being fully specced first time round made a massive difference to my game. Yeah, yeah. You know, basically took sort of three, four shots off quite quickly because 
I had confidence that what I had in my hand was exactly the right club yeah, yeah. for me. So that made a big difference. Well, walking to the first two, that confidence is nice, isn't it? Yeah, what goes on after that is only your fault, isn't it? I mean, I'm I, I can, I, if you want, I can finish off with a whoop. <laughs> finish you, off with a whoop. Me, he all whoop first. I, I'm not a whooping type, mate. It's more, you, your, your, well, your, you hit, your, your what, whoop will be far greater than mine. What noise do you make if you hit a good one? I'm a miserable sod, to be honest with you, mate. You, like, need, you, need, you need to have whoops to your game. You need a whoo, one of them. That's what you That's need. That's a whoop and a good way to finish with Dan. And now, I, I, I think, first of all, just thanks for taking the time out. Pleasure. Nice uh, to talk a little to you. bit of word with our audience, and uh, I'll see how I get on. Right, you Cheers, try Dan. it. I want Thank to see you. It. Cheers. First input I want from you is what you think of this thing in terms of its looks. And uh, I've got to say, it's one of them products that if it's sat on the shelf, I think it's got a bit of a wow factor, it's fair to say. Again, something you'd expect from PXG. What was the story behind the design, uh, what this is influenced on? Mustang car, I believe, is sort of that uh, where the influence comes from, from this driver. I've got to say, for me personally, from that uh, sat behind the ball, from a dress, it is one of the, if not the best looking driver head I've seen on the market. It's that two-tone black into grey, matte finish on that grey side, and you've got these two um, indentations, if you like, that are guiding you towards the centre of the club face of the dress as well, which I think are really useful, but also look the part as well. And I believe that's designed on uh, sort of uh, the bonnet of a Mustang car. Uh, but it's your opinion I'm interested in. Plenty of images gone in front of you now. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on this new next gen, uh, gen two rather, PXG drivers and fairways? Right, I am about to start hitting some balls. We're going to start with the uh, the driver, gen two driver. This is the one I'm excited to hit. It is the. We're going to start with the X. There's two versions, X and XF. Main story is this, both are considerably more, both models I'm talking about now, considerably more forgiving than the previous models, than Gen 1. Uh, also, both models lower spinning. Obviously, there's variations between the two products and possibly aimed at different players. Maybe more forgiveness in that XF product that I'd be looking for. Uh, but certainly in terms of MOI and forgiveness, uh, this is the most forgiving in terms of backed up data. MOI, this is the most forgiving driver that's out there on the marketplace so far. Certainly something that very much interests me. We all know, uh, we know Lawrence from the channel previously. Uh, Lawrence is just setting uh, some shafts up for me in terms of some options. I'll start hitting some golf balls and along the way, I will give you some feedback. I think that's how this thing will uh, pan out and uh, we'll see how we get on. But I'm finally about to hit a ball with this Gen 2 drivers. Straight over that white post. So what we're going to do, through the sleeve settings that we have, I'm just going to keep you in that 10.5 setting because the launcher is pretty good. I'm just going to put you in our flatter options, which yeah. is the PXG logo on the, on the sleeve. Uh, just because our spin was far too low, I just want to get uh, get the weights moving back. Yeah. That's just going to help us generate about two to 400 revs more spin. Which is an, an issue I have, is literally I do struggle a low spin is what yep. I can produce with the driver so if we can raise that up a bit yeah uh, logical move I mean 1700 on the, on the good strikes is, is just yeah. too low yeah okay first thing just to report back while uh, Lawrence is just making a bit of an adjustment there as you heard from the first few shots of that hit really uh, a unique sound and feel is the first thing I noticed I've literally hit five balls but it's the first thing that uh, I felt um, totally different sound uh, once again as I found with a lot of PXG products, I find and see things totally different than I've heard and felt before, and I'm talking in a positive way again. Um, so five balls in, that's all we're at at the moment, and we'll see what happens uh, when we make these few changes or when Lawrence does. See that? That ball, yeah? That's just a great shot today. Again, bullet straight, straight of that red flag. But the interesting thing, as ever, is for me, is about the forgiveness. It wasn't the best of strikes from me. Um, but I'm finding that with the new setting, it's helping me keep that club face just a little bit more open yep. uh, at, at impact as well. Definitely. And what I love is your average at 2.5 spin is just fantastic. Bang on, yeah. One of the big things about the whole PXG thing is, is the ability to get very much dialed in in terms of uh, a very accurate fit. The little weight ports, there's so much um, adjustment that can be made within each of these drivers and uh, it can often be um, overlooked, it can often be looked at as, a, as a, perhaps a gimmick but I can assure you it's not. The difference between just two settings there 
is totally different. You can you can recognise not only through the shots and the data that's being recorded, but you can also feel it in the swing itself. Um, so we will carry on going. And I think, like I said, this is how. Um, never know how to record these things. This is how it's going to pan out today. And uh, I'll tell you, I'll keep updating you as we go along, as the differences are made by Lawrence. And uh, let's see what we end up with at the end of it all. And again, it, you might just stayed be able there. to make that out. That just stayed there. Yeah. And and typically, this is what we see. Actually, from Gen 1 to Gen 2, the sort of factor that the ball doesn't shape as much through the air yeah. on off strike, so you don't get as much gear effect acting on yeah, that yeah. golf ball. So that one there, even in our XF head, it's still only spinning at like 2,000 revolutions, but you've got a really solid launch at, at 13.6, yeah. and the, the total distance is, is 268. For me. And that there is just button. A lot of filming from a crouch position today, I don't know what that's all about. Uh, anyway, we ended up there, uh, a few different shafts as ever, like I said, to try and find out, um, well, get that club head performing as best it possibly can. And that's one of the things, like I keep saying, that I really like about PXG, the extent they go to in terms of the fit. The point I want to mention at this moment is that I would have been fit for a um, hazardous handcrafted shaft. I mentioned earlier on in the video, this is one of the shafts that would come as a stock option. And the thing to really bear in mind is if I went for a fit with another brand, there's every chance that I would pay a significant upcharge for that shaft head combination with another manufacturer. So that's where you've got to bear in mind. This is still included in that 550 price tag. And that's a real important bit, I think, when you consider, um, when you're talking about and comparing the price of these products. <laughs> but right so we've done the driver more than happy with how we ended up there uh we're going to go into the three wood yeah now, 0341x i've asked for it to be set up with a little bit more loft in terms of so we're standard 15 uh we're up at 16 at the moment but what we'll stand is standard, standard would be 15, 15. For the three wood, yeah. so put a little bit more loft into this for me as a personal choice and that'll uh, bear out in the numbers no doubt but i just wanted to have a look at the weight settings again yeah so our, our current standard setting is all four four gram tungsten weights forward uh what we're going to do just because of the shape profile that you've just shown us there in the first few hits uh, we're just going to start by just moving one of those weights through the heel for you okay and what is the weight on the perimeter what sort of weight uh, um, 0 0.8 what? 0.8 and there's quite a, so in there there's what one point is that 1.6 in 1.6 and all of a sudden we're just moving uh, another four grams through there and taking 0.8 out so it's all about uh, tweaking refining and moving these weights around once again to have a look at what we've just done there which is hit some shots make some adjustments and once again let's see how we're going with this one perfect in the last few uh with the with the shaft we ended with on the drive down with this we're not seeing that that, no. that miss left. It's not diving left on us no. at all. In fact, this one isn't even shaping left at all. No. We could probably get away with another weight through that heel. Or not. Just I don't it. know why you would. It's just that balance with me, getting through the ball but without whipping the bed over, yeah. That's really good. My, yeah. my great thing is 4-3 four, four, spin, yeah. angle of descent is 45 degrees. Just, That's stopping. stopping. Yeah. So you're getting it out there. I mean you're carrying it 200 and it's finishing 207. So and if you're talking numbers that's just unreal for, a, for yeah. that sort of loft hybrid. For you, what I like to see here is that flat setting is definitely taking that left shot out. Yeah, yeah, that's done since we made the amendment. Uh, and what I am liking is is how consistent you're hitting that. So that's 200 on the carry, yeah. 4-3 spin, and again, it's still landed at that 45 degrees, so... It's that same number. Exact same number. Yeah, 
you know, you're going to struggle to get a long iron to do anything like that. So just talking through the uh, the overall performance of this in terms of averages, so sort of like a 200 carry? Yeah, so you're, you're at 200 on the carry, 212 sort of total, angle of descent 45 degrees. And that spin number though of what, 4-3? Uh, yeah, you're at 4-4. Four, 4-4. Four. Four. Four, four. I mean, anyone who watches the channel, uh, it, with irons, uh, I have particularly low spin. So, yep. I mean, to come in with a effectively 20 degrees between a three and a four hybrid, yep. coming down at that steep descent with that spin, going into long greens, you uh, can attack stuff long par with that. threes rather. Yeah. You can attack stuff with that. That's done really, isn't it? It's not, <laughs> there's not a lot of messing around with You're that. Very to be fair, we've got the straight, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's been said. Uh, we just, we literally, um, I think once we got those, the flat lie as well, wasn't the adjustment that we made in the driver? For you, that, that that's making a big change. You know, it's it's not allowing the face to, to close anywhere near as much as what yeah. what it would in a standard sort of setting for us. Uh, so that's just enabling us to, to to really stop that sort of left miss that you, that yeah. you said initially that you don't yeah. want to see. And it did have a it did have a massive it did have an immediate impact. But then the other important thing was it followed through uh, that same setting followed through into three wood and now just into the hybrid. So. Again, it's that same old message that I keep saying. It's uh, the custom fit bit is really relevant, and there's so much uh, movement adjustability. Uh, it's key to get that right, isn't it? Yep, definitely. You do see time and time again. You obviously see it every day. The the significant changes the custom fit element makes. I firmly believe it's a big deal. You know, myself and Matt spend a lot of time fitting guys, and you know our our tour, our tour caliber sort of fitting experience that that every PXG master fitter offers is is different to anything else out there yeah. uh, and, and you know that's why that's why we're PXG we are different no it was uh, I, I say I mean uh, the, the numbers were good but there's more to it than numbers in there I mean you've got to, you've got to, you've got to like the look of the club uh, which I think I said earlier on in the video and I'll throw more images up I was just talking about the driver earlier on um, I'll throw images up of the hybrid and the three wood that we've been through. They've all got that kind of uh, that matte finish look. It's an absolute. I, I like I said, it's a personal thing, obviously looks, but I think they're absolutely got this bang on, uh, and they sit behind the ball nice. They perform. You know, you argue with the numbers. I don't know. They were. They. I, I can tell you, the, the balls I hit today from driver through to hybrid, the performance was from my level. It was. Uh, it was solid. To be fair. Right, okay, so that was all yesterday. Uh, back into your plow towers, towers and uh, giving it a bit of a summary. Uh, I've had a little bit of time to think about the whole, um, well, the whole day, the whole product range, what I thought and how I present this summary to you. Um, always going to be an issue. We've got to talk about the price, but we're talking about it in a whole different way than we have done ever before. And that's because this driver is probably 300 UK pounds lower, maybe a little bit more than that, than Gen 1. And that's a major difference but it's still very expensive so what i would say is this if you're a golfer out there that's watching this channel that is prepared to pay 450 pound for one of the ping um callaway tailor-made products then this will be of interest to you if you're not prepared to pay that kind of money then i totally respect that and also understand that but just getting back to um why pxg might be a consideration now if you're buying one of those uh, three brands um the main thing is what you're getting for your money. And it's all about the stock shaft option that PXG are given. What I ended up with yesterday in terms of my fit, and I'll go on my numbers very, very shortly, I ended up with a handcrafted hazardous shaft, which would have uh, incurred a fairly heavy upcharge with one of those other brands. It was a stock option with the, um, with the PXG club. So obviously what that means is it brings them very much in line if you're going to go for any of the upgrade shafts from those companies then all of a sudden the price bracket becomes they're, they're, they're identical it might even swing things the other way so that's a very important thing that has happened not only in the price reduction but the stock options that um, stock shaft options that pxd are offering anyway put that to one side my performance on the day uh, i'm waiting and i'll may get some numbers because I'm trying to get this review up very very quickly um, I'm waiting on some numbers from uh, from Lawrence and hopefully he gets them over if they do they're appearing on the screen now but I'll give you a recap of what I achieved uh, starting with driver uh, 255 average carry 
at 13.6 launch, 2.3 average spin. Dispersion was good, and dispersion was good, and it changed, the whole setup changed and evolved through that fit process. And where I ended up from where I started was probably quite different. And uh, by the end of it, I was fairly confident when I was sat behind a ball, I was knocking that ball as good as I have done in terms of driver for a long time, and gaining some decent yardage as well. Really, there, there's, there are good numbers as I've ever achieved, but I was doing it consistently, one after the other. That's on, whether I do that on the fairway would be another matter. Um, three wood, 240 carry. Again, similar sort of numbers in terms of spin. Everything was bang on the button where I wanted it to be. Uh, the hybrid was mega impressive. 200 carry, I think we mentioned this in the video. 200 carry, um, over 4,000 spin. Great descent angle. And again, stopping into greens or even on tight par fours, taking it off the tee, great option. The looks thing is a personal thing. I personally feel they look absolutely stunning. Sat behind the ball. Uh, I'm gonna go as far as to say the best looking set of driver fairway hybrid uh, collection that I've seen to date. I love that matte gray finish and the, what they've done there. It looks superb, but again, um, I've already asked for your opinions on that. After that, you know, what more can I say? Uh, I think you get the general gist of things. I sort of give you an immediate feedback after I'd hit balls throughout the day, with a slightly different review than I would normally do. Um, it's very hard to sit here and say anything different. I had a wonderful day. Uh, I went down to Woburn Golf Club. I didn't play there, unfortunately. That's for another day. Uh, I met some great people. I heard a lot of things said, all very positive. The cynics out there, you know, I mean, no doubt it's it's a nice day. I had the luxury of having a very nice day and uh, it's very easy, I suppose, just to sit here and say nice things, but I try not to do that. I try to keep it honest. I try to uh, keep it. I'm building an audience that relies on my opinion, so I'll give it to you how it is. And like I said, I can't sit here and lie. I can't be negative about something that is absolutely, it ticked every box. It was superb and that's me done. And I think the only, I think the way to finish this review it's not from me, it's in the immortal words or noises of Mr. Dan Walker. I'll see you soon.